Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Live here. Um, if you are listening in, would love to uh, know that you can hear me. I'm Melissa Gerson, I'm the founder and CEO of Tranquilo. Um, if you can go ahead and like this video, um, give me some hearts, let me know that you're listening because um, sometimes my internet's not so great, so I would love to know who's out there, who's watching, um, where you're coming from. Um, again, my name is Melissa Gerson, and I'm the CEO and founder of Tranquilo Mat, um, and I'm here today as a nurse. Um, I'm a maternity nurse. I have about six years experience in the Boston area, and I am here to speak to you about diapers. Uh, we did a diaper uh, Facebook Live a few weeks ago where we covered wet diapers. We also covered... Um, <clears throat> meconium, um, as well as kind of breastfed, bottle fed poop, um, and kind of what to expect with your diapers, how to do circumcision care, um, the difference between boy and girl diapers. So we kind of did um, a whole uh, beginner diaper section um, about wet diapers, like I said, um, boys versus girls, circumcision care, um, as well as kind of the basics of baby's first poops. And so this week I'm going through all the glorious rainbow colors of um, poops that we can expect and what's, what's ones are good and which ones are ones that we really need to talk to the doctor about. So um, I wanted to go ahead and get started. Again, I would love if people can hear me to go ahead and give me a thumbs up or a heart. Um, let me know where you're tuning in from and how old your baby is. So. Um, wanted to go ahead and get started. Um, as always, I prepare, prepare like a whole list of things to go through with you guys. So one of the first things that I wanted to go through, um, and we did go through it a little bit last week, but I wanted to go through it even more this time, was um, meconium, um, meconium and transition poop. So when babies are first born, their poop is called meconium. It's very dark. It's very sticky. Um, it ends up being almost like this tarry substance, and it's called meconium. It's based on a buildup of um, red blood cells uh, that that the baby has during their time in utero, and it's essentially they can't get rid of all the bile, which is what when blood red blood cells die they break down and they become bile or that's what makes everyone's poop brown but when you haven't pooped in nine months it ends up becoming this very very thick tarry black substance so um I had made these a couple weeks ago for you guys, so I'm sorry if they're a little bit, but this is almost like how black and dark. Um, this is not actual poop for everyone, but I made these up with things in my kitchen. Um, so this is almost like what a meconium poop would look like, black, dark, tarry, um, and sticky. And um, so that's that one. And then as probably within the first 24 hours, you would expect to see that kind of meconium poop after baby is born. And from there, um, it'll start to get a little bit greener, a little bit greener, a little bit greener um, until it finally becomes what's called transition poop. Um, and that poop is th like about like by day three to five, um, that poop is is there. And then you're starting to see your breastfed um, stools come in around around somewhere between three and five. So day, day two to four is when transition is starting and coming in. And transition poop is kind of like this green, um, this green poop that is I'm trying to find it because I have all these diapers here that I've made up for you all um, to be able to visualize because I don't know about you but I have a hard time visualizing oh here it is so um, the transition poop is a little bit like a greener color um, it's not so much here you can see that this is a little bit dried but it's more of this green um, so it goes from the darker black into a green and that is a transition um, so those are kind of baby's first poops you should expect when babies are born that they should um, take their have their first bowel movement movement in the first 24 hours and then um, they will end up um, having probably about two poops on day two, three on day three, four on day four and then by day five they should have five or more but it's going to depend on whether you've got a bottle fed kiddo or you've got a breastfed kiddo. So um, I'd love to hear for those of you who are just tuning in, um, I would love to know where you're tuning in from and if your baby was breastfed or bottle fed because that's what I wanted to go into next was kind of what to expect within the diapers for breastfed babies versus bottle fed babies. And so we just talked about meconium and transition and breastfed babies have, um, 
more of like a light brown um, mustardy type um, color and it's got a bit of seeds in it and um, you can notice there's a little bit of like you can almost see like little seeds in this one here again none of these are real diapers um, they are things from my kitchen that I concocted to look like diapers so don't panic if I touch them um, but yeah so breastfed poop would be kind of um, and it's usually a lot more liquidy and breastfed babies end up pooping more often almost every time you feed them and you often feed them every two to four hours at first when they're first born so breastfed stool is a lot um kind of like liquidy it's got these milk curds or these little seeds like in it um and it often takes on a consistency very much of uh, people describe it as like a mustard with kind of like these little seeds in it um so that's very normal and that's a breastfed poop um breastfed babies um yeah it becomes this like mustard yellow and it's soft and seedy um and it usually occurs between days three and five after baby is born because again they have the meconium poop first and then transition and then they're moving into their regular stools um bottle fed babies have a tendency to have it's still soft but it's a lot firmer um, in their poo and they end up um, it's more like a peanut butter if anything as opposed to like a mustard that's much more of a liquid um, the the bottle fed is more of like a creamy peanut butter it's brown tannish brown um, it's not like a mustard it's not like that brighter mustard yellow um, it's more of that tannish brown and it's thicker than the breastfed poop and bottle fed babies often will go less often depending on the baby um, as they age they usually have less stools per day so again the rule of thumb is by day five they should have about five but a bottle fed baby might have a fewer bowel movements per day than a breastfed kid so breastfed babies often poop you know eight to twelve times a day almost every time you're feeding them um, but at minimum five to six usually and then the bottle fed babies um, their stool is a little bit thicker um, and that ends up being less often so it's important to remember this because we're also going to talk about the differences between diarrhea and constipation and those are things that you'd usually want to talk to the doctor about um, so just wanted to bring you know kind of bring up those normals of breastfed versus bottle fed and what to expect because the important thing the reason why we're going through this is because there's such a wide variety of things that you can end up seeing in your baby's diaper and for the most part parents aren't used to it or aware of it and so when they see it for the first time they're like stunned and a lot of it can be very common uh, but there are certain things that you'd want to call the doctor for right away and so I wanted to point those out that's why we're going through this because a baby's diaper can really be um, a good snapshot picture into baby's overall health and can help you decide if you've got a kid that's not feeling well um, who's a little bit sick or having difficulty eating and they've got issues going on in their diaper um, whether it's dehydration like we talked about a few weeks ago with diapers and what that looks like um, you know or like fewer wet diapers or if they've got diarrhea and they're not feeling well these are things that can all help you drive the decision to call your pediatrician and really get your kids seen because it's an overall picture and it's a good picture of their health so um, those are kind of the normal things that we look for in baby poop I know that seems weird but the meconium poop, the transition poop, the breastfed, and the bottle fed, and they're all a little bit different. Um, I also want to let you guys know that we um, I created an entire chart for all of this and we will be um, publishing that live on our website after um, I believe it goes tomorrow so you'll be able to see all of this in a nice little standardized format in a chart that'll be much easier um, or as easy to look at and kind of quickly reference based on color so one of the other um, normal variations on baby poop is actually babies who end up getting um, iron supplements. So some pediatricians will give your kid iron supplements. I don't know if anyone out there, um, if their kid had iron supplements, but those kids often have um, a little bit darker green and sometimes a black tinged poop. Um, it is not quite as thick and sticky as a meconium poop would be, but it ends up being kind of that color, that darker uh, black color. And so that's normal if your kid has had iron um, supplements so oftentimes you're giving them maybe a liquid supplement that can often be for um, breastfed babies especially it's just something to note as a normal variation um, it's not that common usually even if you're giving an iron supplement they'll have a normal kind of breastfed stool but um, it's one thing just to note that you're you're you know you're looking for an iron can also um, make baby go less often because it kind of can be a kind of binding agent or a little bit of a constipator sometimes so important to note that that is a normal variation and you don't necessarily need to call your doctor um, if that's the case 
One of the other really interesting types of poop that um, I would love to know if anyone out there has ever seen or experienced is a lime green poop. Um, and that actually is not normal. Um, and you are going to want to call your pediatrician or a lactation consultant. So a lime green, like this bright, almost looks like algae um, poop. And it's kind of like slimy almost a little bit. Um, that can actually be because your baby, especially this is for breastfed babies, if they are getting too much of the foremilk and not enough of the hind milk. Um, next week, for our live, we actually have a lactation consultant, so she is more of the expert on all of this um, when it comes to breastfeeding, but the understanding um, of breasts, essentially when you first start feeding, the milk is li more liquidy. Once your milk actually comes in, right, not your colostrum in those first few days, but your actual breast milk when it comes in, the first bit of a feeding is usually a more liquidy, low fat content uh, milk. The hind milk is more like a colostrum. It's like a thicker cream and it's at the end of a feed or end, an end of, you know, whichever breast you start feeding on. So if you notice your baby has a lime green poop and it looks like algae, that would be something that you would want to talk to your pediatrician about because um, it could be, or a lactation consultant, like I said, because it probably means that baby is not getting enough of that really, really rich hind milk. And so in that case, you'd want to make sure that you're, um, you're extending their feeding, that you're trying to start a feed on the side that you finished last time. So let's say baby wasn't able to get all the hind milk during one feeding. If you start on that same breast, um, they can start there with that hind milk from the last feeding. So you want to try to make sure that they're getting that nice balance of both the really thick, rich, creamy hind milk as well as that um, beginning kind of more liquidy for milk. And so that bright green, lime green algae poo is something that's indicating that they're not. They're getting too low fat of breast milk and you want to change up how you're feeding them. Um, again, another reason they could have this issue is because of a latch. So that's another reason you definitely would want to consult your lactation consultant or a lactation consultant. Um, one really big area of um, poop colors, consistencies, etc., is when baby starts eating solid foods. So somewhere between four months and six months, most kiddos start um, having solid foods, and that's when um, their poop ends up getting much, much stinkier. So um, usually breastfed babies, their poop isn't as smelly. Um, a formula-fed baby, sometimes their poop can have a very distinct um, formula-type smell to it, so that's normal. Um, but the breastfed kids, if you breastfed your kids, you're probably lucky you didn't have to smell too much of it until you started introducing solids. And that happens around four to six months. And that can be like, you'll be like, what just happened? I don't even know, you know, like gas mask on the whole nine yards. Um, but then you can also start to see these crazy array of colors um, when it comes to their poop. So Brown is something you probably be more, you know, that's it more, looks more like an adult poop in that color anyway. Um, and it ends up being, but it's soft, right? It's almost always still, it's thicker, firmer than your breastfed or even your formula fed because you're having solids, right? Um, but it is still soft and squishy and it can range from brown to greenish brown, especially if they've had um, any kind of spinach or, um, you know, like a, the whole spinach meal, then that might be um, a Time where you'll see like a greenish brown, orange brown. Um, that can be if they've had carrots or butternut squash in a meal. Um, you'll start to see that their, their poop might take on this like orangish type color. Um, you might even see like a purple reddish brown. Um, that's usually if your kid has had, let's say like purple carrots or um, beets or other really deep rich colors um, that are red or purplish in, your, in their foods. Um, so that's kind of a normal... Um, a normal thing. One of the things that you can also do when it comes to um, baby poop, and when, especially when you're introducing solids, is if you start to notice that their poop has changed, um, maybe just keep keep in mind what you fed them. Usually, poop um, babies will poop like everything moves through your digestive digestive tract with babies much quicker. Um, but you'll see that type of poop within like 24 to like three days time um, of when you fed them. So maybe don't give them butternut squash for four days in a row, or you're just going to see four days in a row of, you know, orange, just brown poop. Um, and especially if you're starting to notice some consistency changes or um, if baby is having any other like digestion issues that you might notice. Um, so keep that in mind that you can kind of keep, um, 
keep track of what you fed your baby and therefore um, know how well they're taking to those certain foods because you, otherwise you're not going to notice if like let's say butternut squash always gives your baby gas and always gives them diarrhea so keep that in mind um, one of the other um, colors of poop that we can notice when baby starts with solid foods is a darkish blue um, and that's usually if they've had a bunch of blueberries um, and if anyone out there um, is a connoisseur or has a baby who's a connoisseur of those baby foods they have so many awesome awesome um, varieties of foods these days especially in those like baby foods or the pouches um, but they often have these kind of random like you don't realize how many blueberries might actually be in um, that particular pouch or, or baby food that you're feeding your kids so um, keep that in mind that like a darkish blue and a or darkish blue brown is normal again blueberries so whatever you're feeding your kid if it has kind of bright crazy colors you might see some of those colored hues tint and come in through when they have their solid um, when they have their poop and again once baby is taking in solids they are actually pooping less often so again breastfed babies might poop at least five to six times a day if not every feeding up to eight twelve times a day and then um, you're going to have kiddos um, who are formula fed, who are pooping a little bit less often, maybe um, even one, only once a day or twice a day, and that could be normal for them. But solid food, once they start taking solid food, they certainly can extend their poops out and have them maybe every couple of days. Um, so keep that in mind. You're definitely going to see a decreased uh, um, a number of poops per day once you start your kid in on solid foods. Um, the other type of poops, and these are the ones that I really want to, um, to warn folks about. Um, one of the really big ones that's a bit crazy that most people don't know about is, um, it's called a colic and it actually is white. It's chalky white or gray poop. Um, and that is a very, um, like I said, previous at the beginning, bilirubin is, um, is what's created in our, um, in our gallbladder through our bile duct. And it's actually what makes all everyone's poop usually brown in color. Um, and a lack of bile, um, actually will have a, complete white chalky appearance um, and that is not normal at all it indicates some issues with the liver or the gallbladder and it's definitely something that you're going to want to talk to your pediatrician about immediately so I want to be very clear about that if any if you've ever seen any white chalky poop you should be calling your pediatrician right away it's usually something that's so bizarre that most people would call their pediatrician but I do just want to point that one out um Another big one that um, might require you to call your pediatrician is if you notice any mucus in your baby's stool. So first and foremost, if your baby is um, teething, is very has been sick lately has a lot of like nasal buildup and congestion and they're just having difficulty um you know with that and the, and you notice it in their stool that could be normal because they could just be swallowing um all their extra kind of drool and mucus that they've got going on up in their head and it's working their way through the their digestive tract and it's not really changing um and it comes out looking a little bit like mucus that could be totally normal one of the other things, um, and it looks like these shiny, streaky, I mean, it looks like nose snot in your poop. Um, one of the other things that you could notice is um, that especially if the, the kid has it in their, um, and it's more like a diarrhea or they're having other indications of tummy troubles, um, it could be that they have a milk intolerance. And you might want to look at changing formulas, or if you're breastfeeding, um, you could try, you could want to or would want to probably um, cut milk out of your own diet. And that um, that's something else that can be um, very common is if you've got a kiddo with mucus um, into um, into their milk because it can be an indication of that and again if you've got a kiddo who is quite sick in other capacities like they're really like their head cold they're sleeping a lot they're having difficulty eating um, that mucus in their poop could also be a bacterial infection so um, you're kind of looking at the overall picture of the baby if you've just got like a new teether um, who's just really drooly and um, and you start to see mu mucus in their poop that's normal um, but if you've got a kid who has other kind of indigestion issues um, you're breastfeeding them 
they have diarrhea or they've got like a really horrible um, head cold going on and they're otherwise feeling really sick, maybe a fever, um, that could be a sign that you do need to talk to your pediatrician because they could have a bacterial infection or um, a milk allergy where you'd want to actually change up um, your formula or cut milk out of mom's diet, which is super fun. I don't know if anyone out there um, has had a kiddo who has a milk allergy, um, but if you do, you know how um, I personally adore milk. I know um, I, I give all the power in the world to people who out there who can be vegans I cannot be one of them cheese is like my best friend um, and so some of you moms out there who've had to cut dairy out of your diet because your kid has a milk protein allergy ooh, I feel for you um, so yeah so that's another type of um, poop that may or may not warrant um, speaking with a pediatrician and again um, would love to hear where everyone is tuning in from if you can um, if you can let me know where you're tuning in from how old your kid is and whether they were breast or bottle fed um, and then it for fun if anyone wants to give me their craziest poop story like maybe you got poop in your hair and like the mailman came to you know you had to go to the door to answer the door because the mailman was dropping off a package or something crazy would love to hear it um, we all we've all been there and had crazy diaper um, experiences so um, as a nurse I've been peed on a few times I've definitely gotten poop on my hands and not realized it and you know ended up on a chart like charting was something or my pen so um would love to hear your funny kind of uh baby diaper poop stories um so yeah so we're discussing all of that one of the last big categories um of poop that we really want to be cautious of we want to talk to our pediatrician about it's going to be anything that's bloody. Um, so blood in the stool could be a big indicator that we need to talk to our pediatrician. Um, so blood can either be bright bright red or it can be black. And when you see it as black, it's this coffee ground, it's thick, it's sticky, it's similar to meconium, but not as thick and sticky. Um, and you could see it as the entire stool is black, and that would be um, indicative. You definitely would wanna call your pediatrician for that. Um, if the whole stool has taken on this black color and it's become tarry and it's not baby's first day or two of life, right? Um, that can indicate an upper GI issue or some bleeding going on in their digestive tract, but higher up. And then it's going through the system and being kind of digested and coming out black. Um, and that would not be normal. You'd want to talk to your pediatrician. If um, you just start to notice kind of like black little flecks um, in the poop, and like I said, I made some of these. So this would be a good one. So you can kind of see that they're almost like these like black little dots here. If you're breastfeeding and have cracked nipples um, that are bleeding, right, you can still breastfeed through that, totally normal. Baby can swallow those little bits of your blood. I mean, it's painful as anything for sure. And you should make sure you're working with a lactation consultant and make sure you're trying to improve that latch but um, if that's what's causing the cracking on your nipples. But if you've got some nipple cracking and you've got a little bit of bloody nipples and the baby's still breastfeeding, that again, totally normal. You might see some of those black dots or black flecks in their poop, totally normal, nothing to worry about. That's just essentially them digesting your blood and getting it out of their system. So totally normal um, if you see those little black flecks if you're breastfeeding and have, um, have cracked nipples. But if it's kind of the entire poop is black um, or you're not breastfeeding, feeding and you see that those dots um, and it's consistent it's not just maybe one poop um, it's kind of multiple poops through the day or, or every for a few days you would definitely want to talk to your pediatrician because that could be a sign that they are having some upper um, they're having some bleeding in their digestive tract and that's no good um, one of the other like I said I mentioned blood can also be bright red if you have a baby who has diarrhea, now diarrhea is looks like poop in color, but it's like you it was came in a glass and you poured it into the diaper. There are no solid parts at all. There's no seeds. There's no um, seedy portions. There's no no nothing solid at all. That is diarrhea. And if you see red um, diarrhea, that can be a, a bacterial infection, and you definitely want to call your doctor right away. So that would be abnormal diarrhea in general is abnormal, but bright red diarrhea um, is something. To to be concerned about and you'd want to talk to your doctor. Um, with diarrhea, a baby could have one or two diarrhea stools, especially if you've just started introducing solids. It's a new food they've never had. Um, that can be totally normal if you have one or two kind of really liquidy poos um, for a baby. But if it's more than that, um, you would wa probably want to call your pediatrician because you're going to want to make sure they remain well hydrated um, with that. 
Because stomach bugs, especially this time of year, stomach bugs are going around. The flu is going around. Those are things, um, you know, babies babies aren't like you or I. They don't have um, a lot of reserves when it comes to their hydration. And so if they have diarrhea, it's going to be really hard to keep them hydrated. And that can only make them sicker and more difficult to fight off whatever's going on. So, um bright red poop, uh, bright red in their poop and they're constipated now constipation um, we went through what it looks like uh, for the meconium poops, but constipation would be if they've got like these little rabbit, um, black rabbity type pellets that are coming out and they're straining really hard to poo and it looks more like this, like these like pellets. Again, none of these are real diapers. Um, I made these up in my kitchen for you, but see how they're um, these, these like pellet type things and you notice some red flecks. That can either be um, simply because they're constipated or it can be because they've strained um, and they've actually given themselves little hemorrhoids um, so if that's the case and you've got a kid who's constantly struggling with constipation definitely talk to your doctor um, make sure you speak with them about how to keep baby hydrated throughout the day maybe increase their consumption things like that um, but you you know it's not necessarily a huge cause for alarm if baby again if baby has one um, you know a little bit of red or, or um, blood in their stool and they've been constipated and their constipation is just one you know every once in a while totally normal can happen you know just like it could happen to you or I and then the other um, big thing when it comes to blood in the stool is if you've got um, just red in general in the stool. It looks like blood. Um, it's it's kind of normal otherwise in their consistency, whether they're breastfed or bottle fed, their consistency, their frequency is normal, but it's red. Um, this can be, again, a milk protein allergy. Um, so this can be if you if they have mucus and if they have these red, um, this red color to their poop, that can be an indication of a milk protein allergy. So you want to talk to your doctor, possibly um, start cutting dairy out of your diet. So keep that in mind. Um, another one that's very interesting, and it's kind of a mix between, um, it looks completely like jelly. So it's congealed fat. Um, if you guys, um, yeah, you, you know what that looks like. It's almost like that, like that, the cranberry sauce from Thanksgiving that like comes out of the can and you're like, how do, it's like almost like jello -y and you're like, how did this get made? But instead it's like mushy, right? So it's not formed. It's this mushy, it's called currant jelly. Um, and it takes on this congealed fat look to it and it's, it's bloody, it's bright red. That can indicate serious bacterial infection, um, or other intestinal issues. And you would want to get your baby seen by a pediatrician right away. So if your baby starts pooping out, um, just kind of like I said this currant jelly or strawberry jelly no seeds just like looks like bloody mucusy you know gross congealed fat talk to your doctor I mean again this with the with the um, white clay you know the acolic one where it's just this chalky white those are things that are pretty shocking to parents and usually we'll call a pediatrician but I do want to point them out here um, for everyone. So um, again, we're going to be publishing a blog that'll also have a chart that kind of goes through everything I've just gone through with you guys today. So you can reference it, you can keep it for reference, you can hang it up on your, like maybe not your fridge, because when you're going for a snack, you don't want to be looking at that. But you know, hang it where you're, where put it with all your diaper supplies, wherever you diaper baby by your changing table, um, and keep it up and keep it handy so that if you see any of this, um, you can, you know when to call your pediatrician or know what it means. Um, the other thing, the last thing that I want to talk with everyone about today is diaper rash. I am sure everyone out there has had babies with diaper rash. Um, it's something that just every kid, especially um, kids in diapers, have had. Um, it's just like you know, kids are in diapers up until usually like two, three years old. Um, so that's a lot of time in diapers and uh, it, it happens. It just does. And so what is diaper rash? How do we prevent it? You know, what do we do to... Um, what causes it, that kind of thing. So very briefly, diaper rash is just an irritation um, of the skin in the diaper area. It's usually red. It's usually a little bit like um, a little irritated red, pimply skin. Sometimes it can be warm and sometimes it can be slightly swollen. Um, it's usually caused by the combination of pee and poop in a diaper it creates an ammonia and that can be very harsh on a, on a new baby's skin. And so especially you're just going to want to try to change diapers pretty often in those cases, especially if you've got a kid who's got diarrhea for whatever reason or they've been sick. Um, you might need to up your, your diaper changing routine to prevent um, any kind of diaper rash with that. 
And then there's going to be kids who just have really sensitive skin. I was one of them. You see me, I, this whole thing, I've got like this very itchy nose. Um, but I've always been a, I've always been a person with sensitive skin. And then when I was a kid, I was always getting um, diaper rash. And I was always, you know, I would get like um, kind of rashes. Like I would touch a dog and I'd get like a rash on my arm or something. Um, so I, any baby, even no matter how often you might change their diaper if they just have if they're just sensitive they have sensitive skin you're going to kind of run into more diaper rash than than others um chemical fragrances like in their diapers or if you've just changed if you're if you're washing your diapers using reusables and you're washing them and you've just changed detergents that can also cause a diaper rash um and you antibiotics are another big cause um of diaper rash so that can if, if your baby has to take antibiotics for whatever reason you might want to talk to your pediatrician about also doing a probiotic so that the good bacteria that they need and want in their um in their digestive tract as well as kind of on their skin doesn't get killed off when when it comes to the antibiotics because that's what the antibiotics antibiotics are going and killing all bacteria and that includes kind of the good um, the good bacteria that we need um, oftentimes for uh, proper functioning again I think I mentioned when babies start solid food that can also be a time because their poop is changing it's got all these different colors you've got different variations um, in consistencies and so that's where just watching what you fed them maybe separating it out feed you know um, the like the uh, butternut squash. I don't know why I keep talking about butternut squash today. Apparently, I want that for lunch. I'm not really sure. Um, but but you know, like or you, let's say you've um, given them strawberries. Um, you know, maybe you break that out and don't give it to them for dinner too. Right? Just give it to them. Um, give it to them every few days instead of every day. The same meal or the same thing throughout the course of the day um, when you're introducing new things, so you can keep an eye out. Uh, strawberries is. In, in particular um, and other kind of acidic berries or berry juice can also um, be a cause a higher instance of diaper rash so just keep that in mind when you've got a kid who's starting solid foods um, that you just want to know what they're what they're eating and kind of keep track and make sure you're not getting any diaper rash issues related to the foods that they're eating to prevent diaper rash, I already mentioned this is just really good diaper hygiene so make sure you're cleaning baby thoroughly during diaper changes, you're, you're um, diapering, you're changing their diaper frequently so that they're not sitting in, in uh, dirty, especially poop poop plus pee in a diaper can mean diaper rash pretty darn quickly. Um, again, you know, if you really want to get baby dry, this is kind of a, um, a pro tip, so to speak, and you've, they've already got diaper rash and you want to kind of dry them out. Um, you can let them go sometime without diapers. I know that seems really weird, but if it's summertime, like let them out without a diaper, um, outdoors and like, you know, leave them out for 30 minutes to an hour. And that can really help dry out that area, get some, you know, get some sunshine there and just really, um, let, everything air out and prevent diaper rash and also uh, help treat diaper rash you can also kind of mimic that if it's winter time and it's cold you're not going to send your baby out without a diaper outside that's just crazy talk um, and maybe you don't have the time or the wherewithal to have baby without diaper um, during the day but if you can try it um, for a little bit of time and um, you can also use a hair dryer so you, you know during your diaper changes you can dry baby's bottom um, always use the coldest setting right the, the coolest setting because you never want to burn baby with a hair dryer but you can dry out their bottom um, and that can both prevent diaper rash as well as um, treat it if you've got a case going on with baby there um, the last thing, like I mentioned, is to um, watch your fragrance fragrances. So if you've just switched to a new diaper or you've just changed your wash cycle, um, you want to make sure that you um, either switch back to whatever you were using um, or maybe switch to something else altogether. So fragrance-free um, items are usually best for baby because it prevents any kind of sensitivities or issues. Um, there are a few times you're going to want to, um, for the most part, that's how, that's both how you prevent diaper rash as well as treat diaper rash. Those are kind of the same things you, oh, and you can also use a barrier cream like a, um, Boudreaux's butt paste or a desitin, um, and that can really create an additional barrier to baby skin. So if they're having any fragrance issues or, um, you know, they do nightly diaper, they might poop and pee in the diaper and they're sitting in it overnight, that desitin, um, or that, you know, the butt paste, the Boudreaux's butt paste, I love that that name, by the way, um, when you have those, you, you're adding it as like a barrier to the skin so that you're not, um, you're not causing additional irritations. And that can be helpful because you don't have to wipe you're wiping that down, but you don't have to scrub that off in between your diaper changes. So you can kind of keep this nice barrier on baby's skin. Um, that's, that's hydrating and helping them, you know, stay away from kind of those, um, 
issues with any like ammonia or you know strawberries that are really acidic that might be causing issues so um, those are both ways to treat and prevent diaper rash they're one in the same there are and most of the time diaper rash gets better on its own especially once you start to notice it you're really kind of tackling it if you've got a, a kid um, who's just had diarrhea you're more likely to get a bout of it but it's gonna go away on its own as the diarrhea resolves their diaper rash is gonna get better and you're gonna be fine the times you want to call the doctor if they have diaper rash is if the rash is getting worse and not improving after several days um, it just keeps getting worse and worse um, especially if it goes outside of the diaper area that's a pretty severe case of diaper rash um, you might start to see the rash extend up into their tummy or onto their legs that's the time um, especially if it's been a few days you want to talk to your doctor if they have any signs of a fever um, you would want to talk to your doctor and if they have any signs of an infection in their diaper rash so that would be yellowy patches like pus filled um, patches or pimples blisters open sores any of that stuff if you're seeing in their diaper pretty sure you would all call your doctor but um, I would be remiss to not mention it of course right um, so that's really it when we think about diapers I know I just gave you like 35 minutes of content it's insane um, but that's diapers that's um, we did part one a few weeks ago um, and I would love to um, to know if anything I said today was interesting or helpful for you um, if there was anything that you learned today again I would love to hear your funniest silliest poop story even if you're watching this after the fact um, would love to we do check check in on these videos and love to um, comment with the folks that are out there so please don't forget forget um, to let us know where you're tuning in from, how old your baby is, and like I said, maybe your craziest um, diaper story in the time where you were totally like, bah! Um, so yeah, so that's that's diapers in a nutshell. Um, next week, we have a lactation consultant who's going to be with us. Um, her name is Katie Zareski, and she is from Boston Baby Nurse, and she's the founder of Yummy From Mommy blog, um, and she's going to be talking about how to... Um, how to get started using a breast pump. So for all you working mamas out there who are, are soon to go back to work um, or have or been pumping and want some tips and tricks, um, she is going to be the person for you because she is a lactation consultant. So that's going to be next week's live. Um, and I believe I'll be joining you guys the following week. Um, maybe not, maybe the week after. Um, but stay tuned to our channel because we're always providing great content for you guys um, and learning um, kind of what you need. So I would love to open it up to questions if there are any out there. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions out there, if not, even if you're even if you're not watching live and you have questions, anything that came up, um, feel free to put them in because we do check in on these every um, you know every day just to make sure we're answering everyone's questions. So we're he I'm here as a resource for you as a maternity nurse. I've got a ton of expertise, and I'm always happy um, to answer questions and help you understand your baby. Um, and again, next week, Thursday noon time, Eastern Standard Time, we are doing a live with Katie Zareski a lactation consultant um, from Boston Baby Nurse who's going to be talking about pumping and being a pumping mom so you're not gonna want to miss that if you are a pumper um, or you want to know what's 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 going on you're thinking about pumping or you're going back to work soon um, so I'm gonna wait another moment or two in case there's a few more questions um, I don't see any maybe I'm having a technical glitch myself but um, Oh, hi, Taisha um, from Chicago. Your baby is three months old, so you're going to be starting solid soon, Taisha, huh? Um, and I apologize. Some of these things didn't come in as I was actually doing the live, so I'm not sure what was going on. I think I was just having some weird technical difficulties. I just, of course, updated my phone, right? So I probably was what caused it, you know, when you get, when the apps, you get all the updates, everything messes up, so um it doesn't look like there are any questions currently out there. If anyone thinks of anything after we log off, um, don't forget to ask. And as usual, it was a pleasure speaking with you guys. And I look forward to our next time together on a live. Um, but don't forget to tune in next week to um, hear from Katie, who's going to be a lactation consultant. So thanks, everyone, and speak with you soon. Bye.